Well, let's talk about not just Kevin Harvick who won this weekend, but backup cars were kind of the winners of the weekend. It was the storyline that came out of New Hampshire. Ryan Newman, who finished P7 in a backup car. Denny Hamlin, P2, obviously. William Byron, P12. Larson, unfortunately, had a lot of problems on the track that we'll get to later. And then Alex Bowman, who went through about 90 backup cars, <laughs> he finished his P14th. So 20 people were working on his car by the end of the weekend, including JRM. Yeah. R- rough weekend. Bowman for was the in the ADA. car working on that thing, too. I think, you know, that, that blows my mind. That car had not touched the racetrack until Sunday when he rolled off. Mm-hmm. And to bring it home in 14th, I mean. It was a black car. It wasn't even his car. (laughs) They were peeling the numbers off of other backup cars. It's it's just wild. Yeah, I mean, they were were one step away from going out in the parking lot and finding someone with an actual Camaro (laughs) to run on that racetrack. I mean, it's it's just insane to me that a lot of people had that much trouble. But And Hendrick really had, you know. Struggled. They had a lot of issues. Mm -hmm. Um, But, you know, that, you know, there's no consolation to not winning. But when your crew can come together once you've qualified and, you know, they're going to have a weekend like that in the playoffs. There's 10 weeks. Odds are they're going to have that. So to get that under your belt and know that you can come out and and have an okay day, that's pretty good. All right. Well, let's talk about another um, storyline that's coming out of this weekend. A little bit of drama. And these are two names that have had a little bit of drama on the track before. Ricky Stenhouse Jr. and Eric Jones. He's gotten me a couple times now, so uh, he'll have one coming at, at some point, you know, when he's trying to make the playoffs. So. Yeah, I'm interested to hear Jesse's point on this. Well, I mean, Ricky's a man of his word. We've seen him act on that before. I think Ricky might be a little more frustrated than he needs to be. I'm anxious to... He has to win. Exactly. He's feeling pressure, and I don't believe that all of that pressure and frustration is coming directly from Eric Jones. However, Jones might might just be the the victim of all of this pressure and frustration. But um, I don't know. I think that uh, we're going to see it play out in the next couple weeks, no doubt. Yeah, Bristol comes to mind. They're both really good at Bristol. Who has more to lose here? I think it's it's Eric. I don't think – I mean, both of these guys are aggressive race car drivers. They, you know, I think Ricky's probably a little bit more aggressive than Eric is, but Eric's not one to – Ricky is not one to have friends on the track. Well, we and, and Eric's the same way, and Eric's not one to back down. If You know, he's not going to lift and, and let you go by either. It's going to be interesting to me because they both have a tendency to run really well at Bristol. I think that's Eric's best shot to win this year. Other than Talladega, I think it's one of Ricky's only shots to win this year just given where everyone else's equipment is. So, And Ricky's probably going to have to win to make the playoffs. Eric can point his way in. So if those two decide not to play nice, Ricky's on the outside looking in. Eric's right now on the inside looking out. Eric's got more to lose. So. Maybe avoid the 17. Well, here's the thing, too. Drivers have a very long memory on track. Yeah, and they... I think Ricky is one that when he says it, it's probably going to happen. So if I'm Eric Jones, I have to be a little worried about what could happen at possibly Watkins Glen or Bristol, where they are both very good drivers and have very strong finishes there. Well, and I have to ask you guys this. I mean, it goes back to that playoff picture. Jones is 28 points above the cut line. He's he's three above, three places above the cut line. I really believe that he's just trying to kind of continue onward, make his way here in the Cup Series and continue on this upward stride that he's been on. Do we feel like he's meant to cause this kind of, I don't want to call it a rivalry, but cause this frustration amongst in-house? Or do you think he's just kind of a victim of, of circumstance here and trying to make his way? I mean, he's got a claw for it. And we all know the summer stretch is where Eric Jones tends to, to – I mean, he does his best work over the summer months. And we've seen that the past two seasons, and we've seen a continuation of it this year. So, you know, I just – it is what it is, right? I mean, it's you got 40 race cars on a mile track, you know, there's not a lot of real estate there. The thing that worries me for Eric Jones is I think his mindset and that 20 team has kind of transitioned into we just need to survive in advance, finish the races, have as strong as finish, uh, finishes as we possibly can, get as many points each stage that we possibly can, whereas Stenhouse is kind of a throw a dart at the wall and I'm going to go after it as hard as I can because I need a win and I can't point my way in here. So when you have a person that I feel like is on the attack versus the person that's on the defense, the attacker seems to be a little more aggressive. 
if Jones sees Ricky, it's going to be in his rearview mirror. I only think it'll be for a couple spots, but I think Jones will be faster than him there. Okay. He shouldn't have to worry. Well, and right? let's be real. There's going to be a lot of people in that field that are not happy with yeah. Stenhouse by the end of the race. A lot race. of collateral damage right, right there. It's not just, at that point, it's not just a Stenhouse-Jones battle. It's a lot of cars involved. Yeah. 